Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ed Sheck, and on behalf of the ITPM, I'd very much like to welcome you to tonight's seminar. Now, wherever you are on your journey, you are very much part of the ITPM community, which is without doubt the best community there is for retail traders to empower themselves. Now, I first crossed paths with Anton in the late 90s interviewing him as part of Goldman Sachs European shares. And then when it came to crunch time, I'll never forget what my boss asked me. He said, Shecky, we've got this Anton, we've got white scousers, something about him. We're about to give him a fighter plane. And we're gonna tell him for the first few months, can you not press all these buttons? He goes, do you reckon you'll press them? I said, yeah. He said, do you reckon he's going to have to reject and crash the plane? And I said, no, it'll probably be all right. And the rest, of course, is history. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Anton Creel. Okay, everybody, welcome. Let me uh, pour myself a water. I've got one here, great. So, a little bit rusty, I think, because I've not actually presented for four years. Last time I was here was uh, summer 2019. Obviously, a lot has happened since then. A lot has changed in the world. But some things don't change. How traders make money. It's been pretty much the same for decades, okay? A lot of the stuff you guys get told, quite frankly, is complete nonsense. It's whole shit. We go through different business cycles. There's different asset classes that make money in different, in different uh, cycles, but certain things hold true all the way through different cycles and different decades, okay? We're gonna look at many of those elements today to become successful in trading and how to achieve godlike trader status. What does that really mean? Getting to the top of this game, okay? How do you do it? If we set you the pathway and show you the direction you need to go in, what you need to achieve, you then have to walk that path yourself, okay? That's the best we can do as a school, show you the pathway and give you the tools to do it. But you have to do it. You can't have people on your shoulder for the next 25 years telling you what to do. That doesn't make a good trader copy trading, stuff like this. It's not gonna make you a good trader, you have to do it, okay? So, <clears throat> we'll start with resume first for those who don't know. So myself, I started uh, at Goldman Sachs in 2000 with a lot of these guys here. So Shecky, Chris Cathy, Shane Lanaway, who's new to ITPM. We all worked on the same desk. Jason worked in the financial markets as well at both hedge funds and investment bank proprietary trading desks. So I started Goldman with these guys, Edward Sheck, Chris Cathy, Shane Lanaway in the year 2000, okay? I go to Lehman Brothers in 2004, go to JP Morgan, left the business in 07, went traveling around the world, made the TV show, which many of you might have seen, went traveling again, came back, set up ITPM in London. Quite frankly, needed to get tax efficient when you start making quite a lot of money again. It's better to actually move businesses offshore and put them in tax-friendly structures, okay? So I decided in my early 30s, I'm never paying high tax rates ever again in my life, okay? It's over. So we move stuff overseas. So took ITPM Global, we moved the business to Singapore, which is much more tax efficient than being in the UK. Emigrated to Singapore a year later, set up more structure there, uh, and then emigrated to Phuket after COVID, in 2022, because quite frankly, the Singapore government introduced laws to do with the vaccine. I'm unvaccinated. 
I didn't want to get vaccinated. So their law says you have to be vaccinated as a foreigner or open quotes, fully vaccinated, close quotes, to live and work in Singapore as a foreigner. So even though I own the company, I literally can't live or work in Singapore now, which is insane, right? I can go there as a tourist. So please make it make sense. <laughs> yeah, emigrated to Phuket, bought myself a visa, a 20 year visa, and then just moved. Got on a private jet with the dogs and I was there in a few hours. Okay, so what I wanna do first is outline some trades that we were involved in last year, okay? Why am I doing this? Well, there are three very, very good examples of trades that if you want to be good in this game, you wanna be the top of this game, these are the types of trades that you have to have in your portfolio at all times. So we have what we call bread and butter trades, where we, are, we have long short portfolios and we choose to leverage the volatility of those long short portfolios utilizing equity options. So imagine yourself where you've got 10 positions and you're long five stocks and short five stocks, okay? So just think of a model portfolio like this and it's $100,000 gross exposure. So you have $10,000 in each, okay? So imagine what that portfolio looks like. Stock one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five longs, five shorts, okay? All equal size, cash size, okay? So imagine what that looks like. Now imagine what it looks like if you replace all of those long and short positions with call options and put options with a time limit. So hopefully you know the basics of what an option is. We're not gonna go into that today. Hopefully you should know, but longer call option, you're, you're getting the right to own the stock at a certain price, but you're buying the contract and the contract has value, okay? So you put your $10,000 or even less into that contract, right? Put option gives you the right to sell at a certain price in the future, okay? So instead of, instead of shorting $10,000, you put $10,000 or less into the contract, okay? So what that does is it leverages the volatility. Now, some of those positions we replace with positions like this. So we have our bread and butter positions and we replace some trades in the portfolio positions with these types of trades. So at any one moment in time, you might have a net bias, what's called a net bias in your portfolio. So you can be net long or net short, okay? So if you're particularly bearish on the market, you might have slightly more put options in your portfolio than calls. So you might have six shorts and four longs, okay? But if you get overly bearish and the market starts rallying, how do you make sure you don't lose money and in fact make money if the market goes up? You have a hedge. You can have a hedge in your portfolio, okay? So we're gonna look at a TLT, a TLT trade that we did uh, last year. Um, you also have what's called tail risk trades in your portfolio, where you put a small amount of money into something that you think is gonna move really big, up or down, okay? So it can be a stock that potentially could be down from $100 to $10 in a bear market. They now have a new management, a new operating plan. They're implementing the plan, and it's a, this quarter it's gonna hit the numbers, and to positively and the stock's gonna go up a lot, okay? So, <clears throat> or it could be bearish. It could be a stock that's gone from $100 down to $10 and they're actually gonna go bankrupt. So you buy a shitload of put options and it collapses to zero, right? That's a tail risk trade. The point is, it's a very, it should be a very, very low priced way of playing a huge move, okay? Next one, pain trade when there's a huge amount of positioning in something that becomes consensus, but then the fundamentals change and it moves massive the opposite way and everyone who's got the consensus position on feels maximum pain. So the tail risk trade, we're gonna look at Credit Suisse. The pain trade, we're gonna look at Car uh, Carvana, CVNA, okay? So these are the types of trades that you need in that portfolio over a long period of time. You obviously rotate them, okay? You don't 
have the same ones in there forever, right? You rotate them. Um, these are the types of trades you need to have in your portfolio, in addition to your bread and butter positioning, which is 20 to 60 day time horizon. And we're looking for 15, 25, 50 percent moves something like this over 20 to 60 day time horizons but we're leveraging that volatility with options okay so you want these in addition to your bread and butter positioning okay so let's start with the tlt hedge so what we've got here is and we're going to have a lot of these uh, screenshots screenshots from our discord server which is called Society at ITPM. So we have two Discord servers. We have Society and Study Hall. Study Hall is the entry level. Society is the premium one. If you do a mentoring program at ITPM, you're in the Society one. If you only do online programs, you're in the Study Hall, okay? So Society is the premium one where we have the smartest guys. And by the way, today, we've got a lot of alumni here who've done online programs and mentoring programs and guys who are in that Discord. And we've got a lot of guys here who've made significant money in the last year. So you'll be able to speak to them later, okay? So this is an example of a hedge which we put on last year. So if you remember, the market bottomed in October. And there was a lot of bearish sentiment in the market, especially from retail. And there was a lot of big short interest at the market level from institutions. Market started rallying. So people started feeling a bit of pain. So I put out a message to say, okay, guys, if you're overly bearish, all the mentoring program guys in the Discord, if you're overly bearish and you're, you're basically set up that way, you might want to think about a hedge. Okay, so we run a competition for a tactical hedge at the time. We do monthly competitions, which are very educational, and people uh, do the work themselves and they submit their entries within a week, okay? So the competition here, tactical bear market bounce, let's find the hedge in the market where if you're wrong and you're overly bearish, market rallies hard, you actually get out making money. You don't lose money, you actually make money, okay? So if we look at that table at the bottom here, this was the winning entry, okay? So, we run two scenarios where we say, okay, the TLT, the current price is 94.22, okay? Let's model what happens if we buy, and by the way, it's uh, at the time, it's the 6th of November when we run the competition, okay? So we say, okay, if we get a rally between now to the end of the year, and we're overly bearish, how do we set up a hedge in TLT where we actually come out of this okay? So we don't lose money overall, we make money assume a $100,000 trading account, okay? So what happens if we buy the January 23, 99 strike and sell the December 22, 100 strike on a two for one ratio, 60 contracts versus 30 contracts. At these prices, $1.88 and 82 cents. And we say the TLT goes to 110. So we're $11 in the money on the long, $10 on the money, in the money uh, on the short, with some time value in the long, right? So this is, this is basically modeling the trade TLT where it goes to 110 before the December expiry, okay? So we have a net spend of $8,820, and if that happens, we make 31 and a half grand. So what's that designed to do? It's designed to at least equal what you would lose on your put options, okay? So you don't lose money overall, right? Now, don't forget, the price is 94.22. What if we get scenario two, which is we actually get this credit, the 100 first, and then it rallies to 110. So if by the 16th of December, 22, the TLT is below 100, what happens? Well, we've sold this contract at 82 cents. We buy it back at five cents here. We're modeling five cents, yeah. We actually get this credit, $2,310, okay? And then it goes to 110, what happens? We make 54 grand here, 
So we make 57 overall. So we make a six and a half to one in that scenario, right? So in that situation, we've hit a bit of a home run, right? We make 57, not 32 and a half. Sorry, 31 and a half. Yep. So when we're, when we're modeling this, these scenarios, we're saying, okay, if we put this trade on, regardless of when it goes up to 110, if it goes up to 110 before December 16th, we make 31 and a half grand, a three and a half to one. If it goes up, but it's below 100 by 16th December, and then we get this credit, and then it goes to 110 we make a six and a half to one. So what we're doing is, is we're saying from the 6th of November till 16th of December, we are basically agnostic. We actually don't care what it does. Because if, if it doesn't move up to 110 and it's below 100, we get the credit and then we've got till January to make the rest of the money, right? We're agnostic. If it goes up anyway, before December 16th, it goes to 110, we make money anyway. And yes, of course, there's a scenario three. Who knows what scenario three is? Have a guess or a, an educated guess. So, so the scenario three, yeah. So you, you're path right. Scenario three is you get the credit because it doesn't go up, but then it doesn't go up at all. Now, what happens then? you lose your net spend, you lose this. Now, it's a hedge, remember that, it's a hedge, because you came into this owning a lot of put options that you're worried about if the market goes up and all those stocks go up and all of your puts expire out the money. <clears throat> if that doesn't go up, what does that mean? If the TLT doesn't go up at that time? It means that the market probably didn't rally. So it means your put options are probably in the money. If your trade ideas are good, right? If they're shit, obviously, <laughs> you're, gonna have, you're still gonna have to write off your puts, right? <laughs> but there is a scenario three in the hedge where you lose the money on your hedge, but that's good. You should be happy to lose the money on your hedge. That's the whole point of it, right? If you make money on your hedge, it probably means you're losing money somewhere else. Right? So it's this, it, that's what it's designed for. It's designed to pay for your losses. So this is what happened. That's the 6th of November when the competition starts. We choose the TLT. Boom. We go here to the end of November. So this is 29th of November when I put this up. I say, look, guys, it's important to stay in motion and just bank some money. Make sure you're just banking money every month, right? So the TLT actually moved big in our favor. Why? Because the market rallied and everyone in the Discord who was overly bearish didn't lose money. They actually made money. So that was worth doing. But an amazing lesson for people in the Discord because when you see it all in real time and you're putting the trades on, the swings can be huge. So a guy who had maybe a $100,000 trading account and had potentially $25,000, $30,000 of write-offs for put options because he got overly bearish in November and December, what happens to that guy? He actually makes money out of the rally. And that was an $8,000 spend. Amazing, right? It's such a good lesson. Next one, Credit Suisse. This is a different ball game. Very different ball game, a tail risk trade. This, believe it or not, if you look at it in hindsight, is insane. Obviously at the time, you don't know what's going on. You're just doing your best to predict the future, okay? So look at the date here. 1st of December, 2022. So I say, guys, let's run a competition in December. So think about, we just did the competition in November with TLT. One month later, we're talking about Credit Suisse in December 22. The company's trading the five-year CDS as if they're bankrupt already, okay? So I'm saying, okay, let's run through a scenario. If there's a banking crisis in 2023, Credit Suisse is probably gonna be the one that leads us into the banking crisis. 
because of the financial stress in the market already, okay? How are we gonna play this? Let's run a competition and structure a Credit Suisse goes bust trade. So everyone puts their entries in and we come up with this a few days later, okay? The Credit Suisse bankruptcy trade. And by the way, this is all time stamped in the Discord. It's there forever. So we're not bullshitting you here, this is real, okay? So the winning entry when the stock was at $3.30, and by the way, we're, we're looking at the ADR, the American Depository Receipt, and it has an active options market, and it trades in US dollars on the New York Stock Exchange, okay? So we're not trading the Swiss line, we're trading in the US, in dollars. So here's the winning trade, here's the winning entry. And this is December 2022, okay? Tail risk trade, if, you make a, if, the, if it goes to zero, you make a stupid amount of money, okay? But we're gonna spend a small amount of money. Right, so we put Credit Suisse, where is it at expiry? Zero, <laughs> right? Um, we go long, the June, $1.50 strike puts, we buy 400 of them at 15 cents. We sell them March 2023, $1.50 strike, we sell 200 of them. We do it on a two for one, okay? We sell those at five cents. Now, we modeled them at five cents because we didn't know if we could get the liquidity for the amount of contracts we wanted to do in the market, which would have been thousands and thousands and thousands of contracts, right? It was the, the price at the time was actually 15 versus 10. So we modeled 15.5, because we just didn't know, okay? Anyway, net spend, $5,000. Scenario one, it goes to zero before March. We make a 6.6 .6 to one, okay? Scenario two, we get our credit first, at, and we sell it at five cents and it goes to zero by 17th of March. We get our credit of 1,000. We make 54 grand on the long and we make an 11 to one, okay? So that's pretty nice, right? Five grand spend, tiny amount. If it doesn't happen, what's gonna happen? You just lose five grand. You can deal with that, it's easy. You, anyone can deal with losing five grand in a $100,000 portfolio, especially an options portfolio, right? Let's see what happened. Okay, so we get to the 3rd of March, and uh, there's rumors going around that the Saudi is gonna buy Credit Suisse. So everyone's panicking now in the ITBM community. Anton, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to the Saudis, the Saudis? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're getting very close to the short leg expiring, right? It's now the 3rd of March. So I'm saying, guys, does everyone remember this, how we're gonna play it? Remember how we're gonna play this, okay? We're agnostic. If it goes down now, it's okay. We still make money. You don't have to trade out of it. You just leave it, right? You're relaxed, okay? So we're saying, look, what's the most likely scenario here, right? We're probably gonna get the credit on the short leg. If it goes down later, great. If it doesn't, it's a tail risk trade. It's a small amount of money, right? But it looks like the fundamentals and the price action and the news flow is confirming what we know, okay? So let's see what happens next. That was the 3rd of March. Let's see what happens next. The rumors start coming out into the market uh, that the Saudis may, might take over. So now everyone's worried, you know, if there's a takeover, what price is it gonna be done at, right? So this is 15th of March, two days before our short expires, okay? The timing is ridiculous on this one. Sometimes you just get lucky, okay? So, what am I saying here? One guy's saying, hey guys, congratulations, it looks like this one's gonna pay off. And I'm saying, no. You go for the big payoff, not small. We want big on a tail risk, okay? No congrats, stay patient. We want to see this baby under a dollar, okay? This is on the 15th of March, okay? 
don't trade out on the first big move down. It's probably going to have a lot more downside. And I'm saying, yeah, the Saudis might buy them. That might, that's a possibility. But I'm thinking also they're not going to pay up. They're going to pay down, right? Because there's financial stress here. And I'm also saying, but the probability is they're not because they're dumb money. And they're probably just going to disappear and run from the trade, right? So just play the volatility. We're options traders. When there's volatility, we like it. You don't run away from volatility. You stay in the trade, okay? So what happens here? Let's start back here. This is when we run the competition. The stock is at $3.30, okay? So that's uh, 1st of December. This is the rumors of the Saudis, right? And people, people are wondering what to do. It's two days before expiry. That is expiry on March 17, on the Friday, the third Friday of the month, March 17, okay? And at the weekend, the SMB, the Swiss National Bank, UBS and Credit Suisse get in a room and UBS is basically forced to take over Credit Suisse. And they come up with a price, a bit of a back of the envelope price if you're just given the weekend to make a price. <clears throat> and it's in the mid 80s. Stock goes to 85, 88 cents on the day. The timing was outrageous. So we get our credit and then it collapses literally the day after. We put the trade on three and a half months before. That's insane. Like I said, sometimes you get lucky, right? Most guys were getting somewhere between a six and 10 to one on that trade because a lot of guys actually sold the credit at 10 cents, not five cents, okay? Outrageous, okay? That's a tail risk trade. Now, let me advertise to you the beauty of trading versus investing. That's the entire history of Credit Suisse stock price. Imagine all the drama, the shenanigans, the noise, the bullshit, the nonsense over the years that investors have to deal with. And we come in here and play this right at the end and make a fortune. That's the difference between trading and investing. Okay. Next one, Carvana. This was an interesting one. This was a competition where we're looking for maximum pain in the market. Okay. We've had a nice rally in equities, generally speaking. Generally speaking as well, people are still very bearish in the market, not really believing the rally, right? We technically went into a bull market, 20% rally off the bottom. Tech stocks are flying and we're questioning. We're doing webinars every week as well in the Discord. We're questioning, okay, the market believes in the Magnificent Seven and says, well, it, the rally in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ is all down to seven stocks and everything else is dog shit. We're saying, but what if the rally becomes broader and starts to seep out into other areas of the market? You have to question everything, okay? So we say, what if, what if, what if? What's gonna go up massive with maximum amount of pain? So we have the date here, 4th of May. We look for a pain trade and we're saying, don't forget those turbocharged option structures. We wanna make stupid money out of something that moves big, okay? So don't forget this stock has gone from 350-ish dollars down to $3.50. This is a down 99% stock, right? And then it has rallied off the bottom to about $12, $15. And then we start looking at it and saying, okay, this could be max pain, right? So here's an entry from a genuine student in ITPM, in the Discord, okay? So this is me responding to his entry, right? But essentially he's saying, look, the fundamentals are turning. They're not as bad as people think. The market's incredibly bearish in this stock, like extreme bearish sentiment. This is probably the one that's gonna move the most, 
and there were like 30 plus entries into this. So there would have been other stocks that would have moved as well. So I'm looking at all of his fundamentals that he's saying are turning around. And by the way, I think this one had the short interest, I think it was about 40 plus percent of the float. So if it was going to move, it was going to move really big. Okay. And then I sign off with, I smell blood in the water, pain, <laughs> right? We're at the beginning of May. This is the first week of May, okay? So we look at the structures to put on. And uh, we were putting on structures like you've seen before. So the structures that we've been looking at are called calendar spreads, okay? You buy a longer dated option and short, a shorter dated option, right? In a call spread, you would sell a higher strike. In a put spread, you would sell a lower strike. You can do an inversion but it's more rare. But you're typically doing them on ratios, okay? Because you want to, and you want to try and get the credit up front, right? Because then you get the big payout. Anyway, this is what happened with this one. So this is where, around where we enter the trade, okay? This is where we get out, when they actually reported. So when the stock was $15, we're going in, when the stock's 50, 55, we're going out. Imagine playing that in options. There's guys in this room who you can speak to later that made stupid money in this trade, like really stupid money. Okay, that was a big one for us this year, okay? But that should show you what's possible and even probable if you do your work, okay? because you can have little positions like this in your portfolio that make significant money, right? Now, that one, I didn't put the structure up in the response to the students. I said, okay, this is the one. It's Kawana. It's, that's going to be the one that moves, but you have to do the structure. So guys did their own structures because they know how to do it. We've taught them how to do it, okay? Again, look at the entire history of Kawana. Look at this stock, right? 2017. It's like small dollars. Goes all the way up above 350. Back down. I think it was three and a half, right? $3.50. That's the area we played. That's, again, the difference between trading and investing, okay? So... These are the types of trades that you have to have in your portfolio to achieve the godlike trader status. So we've got a, a model portfolio here. So imagine this is the stock portfolio, okay? You would have your bread and butter trades, one, two, three, four, five. Trade six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six is your uh, believable turnaround story, okay? Fundamentals are turning. Market's still overly bearish. They haven't changed, they haven't moved their positioning. Stock starts moving, pain. You've got a boatload of call options in your account, right? Trade 10, it can be a, an early X growth stock. So a stock that's had a good past maybe, but now they've gone X growth, okay? That would be more of a bread and butter trade where you set up a put option, you look for a 25, 35% move to the downside. You get your timing right. It's a company of stock that goes X growth. That's bread and butter. But it's usually got a higher market cap. So it's not a mid cap. It's usually a large cap stock or a mega cap. Or you just replace that with a tail risk trade where it's actually over. It's a proper bankruptcy or a big tail risk move. Okay. Like the Credit Suisse trade. So that's what a portfolio would look like. Okay. So overall... You know, obviously, trade ideas are important. Structuring is important. Preemptive and reactive risk management is important, okay? But you've got to think about, like, how you make your money, okay? It's not just good enough when you're a trader. And obviously, we want to become top of this game, right, all the time. We want to get to the top and stay at the top, okay? So how you make your money is very important. It's not just good enough to make money in aggregate, okay? It's how you make your money. 
that's important as well, okay? You've got to be consistently profitable. You can't be lumpy where you make money one year, lose money the next year, make money in a period of two months, lose money for five months. You've got to make money consistently to achieve that godlike trader status. You've got to have the ability to make money in up and down markets. And by the way, also sideways markets. So this market in the last six months has been quite tough for a lot of people, especially retail, because they don't know how to make money in markets that we're in now where we move sideways for a period of time, okay? So how you make your money is important, okay? We know this and we know this to be true. The vast majority of retail traders lose money. You can't make money once in a while and then overall lose. And you can't just make money in bull markets. You've got to make money in bear markets and sideways markets, okay? You've got to concentrate on making consistent, absolute returns, regardless of market direction, okay? Your job is to make as much money as possible all the time. Be consistent, okay? Where do we get that? In the US stock market. We get consistency in the US stock market. It's got the largest opportunity set and the best consistent volatility out of all the asset classes. And actually in our video series, the IPLT video series online, we prove it in numbers, okay? And we show you the areas that you need to concentrate on to get consistent returns. You need to make money efficiently. Again, how you make money is important. You can't be sloppy. You can't be messy. You have to be tight. You have to make money efficiently, okay? Of course, making as much money as possible takes precedent, but it has to be controlled. How do you get those absolute returns? Your risk-adjusted returns are obviously very important, okay? So when we look at sharp ratio and we're using options, taking a 20% risk to make a 60, 80% return, that's a sharp ratio of three to four, okay? So you make three to four times the amount that you're risking. If you trade options, you're leveraging up that 20% volatility and you're gonna land, as long as your trade ideas are good, you're going to land somewhere between 50 to 100% if you do what we do, okay? On smaller account sizes, what do we mean by that? 25 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, 250, half a million. Anything under $2 million is a small account. You thought a small account was five grand? No, $2 million, $2 million is a small account, okay? So, <clears throat> if you're taking typically underlying portfolio volatility, if you're forgetting about the options and you just look at that stock portfolio, right? You say, I've got five longs, five shorts. And through correlation, you're looking at the uh, annualized portfolio volatility of having that portfolio, okay? 20, 25% is about right. You don't wanna be taking too little risk, but you don't wanna be taking too much, right? And then you overlay that using options. So instead of having long stock positions and short stock positions, you have long calls and long puts and you stagger your expiries. What do we mean by that? This is preemptive risk management, okay? You can't have too many options expiring in one month. It's expiry risk, too much risk where you've got too many options expiring in one month, okay? If there's too many of them out of the money, you're gonna take a big hit. So uh, we leverage that up because if we've only got a 25% portfolio volatility on our underlying stock portfolio, if we didn't trade options, what's our expected return? We shouldn't expect to make more than 25%. But if we're amazing traders, and during the year we sell everything near the high and buy everything near the low, then we can make more than 25%, but we shouldn't expect it. So we can make probably 25 to 35%, but it, again, it should not be expected, okay? If we leverage it up with options, 50 to 100%, you should land somewhere between there, okay? If you get a tail risk trade like Credit Suisse, on top of that, boom, God-like trader status. If you get a CVNA on top of that, God-like trader status. And there's guys in this room now who have done it this year. Well in excess of 100%, okay? And we didn't necessarily invite these guys. We just said, we're doing our seminar in London. They, they came. 
So you can speak to them later. If you got a drinks ticket, they'll be around, okay? Next, to get to this godlike trader status level, you've got to utilize a systematic process. You can't be chaotic. You know, one of the things that retail traders are really guilty of is that they have no process that's repeatable, okay? A high quality process that's repeatable, that gets them results, okay, on a consistent basis. It's very straightforward. If you have a consistent input that's high quality, what are you gonna get out? Consistent output that's high quality. That means making a lot of money, okay? So retail traders are chaotic. They're guilty of not having a high quality systematic process, okay? What do we mean by chaotic? What's a, what's a chaotic retail trader doing in the last few years? YOLO trading, yes. Where did they go to YOLO trade? Chat forums. Chat forums, Wall Street bets. Who's on the other side? A lot of them, yes. Who does it benefit to have millions of retail traders on Wall Street bets all losing money? <laughs> yes. Hedge funds that are the plumbing in the options market for retail and the brokers, okay? So they encourage it. Of course they do right? That's chaotic retail trading, okay? What else is chaotic? Where, where, do they, where do they get their trade ideas from? Where do retail traders get their trade ideas from? Do they, sit, do they sit down in their office and work for three hours and find their own trade ideas themselves? No. Talking heads in media give them trade, trade ideas. Paid, paid advertising on Bloomberg CNBC, where they do long form interviews, but the guy who's selling the next crypto coin is being interviewed, he's paying them 100 grand for the interview. It's advertising. You get sucked into doing these stupid things, right? Because they know your pain points. You're short on time. You're short on intellect of how things work in financial markets and you want to make as, um, as much money as possible, quickly, right? So they do paid advertising, long form content, pay the media company a hundred grand, and they make it look like an objective interview. Oh, check out this new stock. We're going to interview the CEO, and you get sucked into doing it. Think of all the ridiculous companies in the last three years, but they were public companies. They right? never made money and they're trading on 10, 20, $40 billion market cap, right? And they're now zero. Retail traders bought those stocks. Absolute morons, right? That is chaotic trading, yeah? What else? Getting confused between trading and investing. Look at those charts I showed you earlier, right? Our job is to make money in those little areas, okay? 20 to 60 day time horizon. Make big money in the 20 to 60 day time horizon. Okay, retail traders think trading is investing. No, it's not. So they go into something thinking, oh yeah, this is a good stock, good company, I'm gonna buy it. And they don't even know what their time horizon is they're going in. So let, but let's say they do, let's say they go, I think I'm gonna buy this stock for earnings. And they get it wrong and it goes against them by 10%. What are they doing next? Well, it's a good company, so I'm just gonna hold it. It'll come back at some point. One year later, it's down another 30, 40%. Well, it's a good company, it'll come back at some point. I'll buy some more and stick it in my pension. <laughs> then it goes down another 50%. Yeah, it's not such a good company, but I can't sell it now, so I'll just keep it in my pension. Maybe it'll come back one day. <laughs> right, that's, that's, that's chaotic process, okay? We don't do that. Professional traders do not engage in these activities. Obviously not. So just think of how ridiculous, ridiculous it is to think to yourself, what I'm doing now in any of those scenarios I just outlined, what I'm doing now, surely this is what professional traders do. Uh, no, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we don't get, we run away from any of that behavior, okay? So consistent input, consistent output, process, yeah? You gotta have 
a process for generating high quality trade ideas on repeat, rooted in fundamentals with technical analysis and price action in the minority. Okay, that's just for timing, okay? Trade structures, like the, the structures you've seen today, we replace just owning stock and shorting stock with trade structures that give us massive ROI and allow us to be agnostic. So we can sit back and just relax. We have these ratio trades where we say, okay, if it moves now, I make money. If it moves later, I make money. If it goes against me and I get it completely wrong, I lose a small amount of money. That's how you wanna be sitting in every position, completely relaxed, knowing what you're gonna do from the outset, okay? You know all the outcomes of every trade at every price it's gonna trade at, at every moment. So if you know that, how can you ever panic if you know it upfront? You, you literally can't. You will never panic if you know what you're doing. We were having these conversations today at lunch and last night at dinner about what people were doing during COVID. <clears throat> and you can see in like March, April, 2020, the panic and the craziness going on in financial markets. We were all sitting there calm as Hindu cows, just taking money out of the market, lay up trades, lay up trades, okay? If you know from the outset, you never need to panic, okay? So the structures that you've seen, actually, there's an overlap between the trade structures and risk management. The structures that you've seen so far today, that is really part of preventative risk management. Okay, another part of that is diversification. So not having one or two positions and doing YOLO trades, you're putting less than 10% of your money in a position. When we're doing mentoring programs, we start guys off with a net spend of six, 7% in each position. So they're totally relaxed. They know that if something goes wrong, they can't lose more than 7% in their portfolio. But if they win, they're making 20, 30, 40 on a position, right? Reactive risk management, okay? That can't be taught in a video series. It can only be taught in a mentoring program. So when something moves and you have a position, whether it's against you or in your favor, how you're gonna deal with the position, what's your next action that you're gonna take, how to limit losses, and then this overlaps into the next one, which is managing your business properly, okay? You've gotta go for certain statistics which make you an efficient, really good, God-like trader, okay? And you've got to manage the business to make sure you get those stats, right? So we're targeting 50 to 100% return, usually on 20, 25% underlying volatility. Leveraging up with options, which means we're gonna land somewhere in that 50 to 100% gate. Of course, we can make more, because if we get a Credit Suisse or a Carvana, we get the God-like numbers, okay? Win-loss rate, 60-40. If you can, 65-35. Our score, which is the ratio of the dollars that you make on your winners divided by the dollars that you lose on your losers, minimum 1.5. You obviously want to be making more money on your winners than you lose on your losers consistently. Okay, that makes you efficient. Yeah. Sharp ratio, minimum of three if we're trading options. Average days in a trade, we're looking at the 20 to 60 day time horizon, but 20 to 25 days as an average. Why? Because we're gonna have lots of credits that are one month out and there's 20, 21 days in a trading month. So if we get a credit quickly, it brings down the average, right? So 20 to 25 days is about the right number. We're gonna look at some examples of real guys in ITPM now, okay? So this is uh, Gunter. You might have seen this guy. I mentored him last year. He was on the Thailand program. Uh, Gunter got very good returns over his mentoring program. So he put, I think he was a hundred, yeah, starting equity, 100 grand. Over his mentoring program, he booked 280 grand of winners, 200 grand of losers, 80 grand profit, net 76. He didn't use all of his money, all of the 100 grand. So 60, 40 win-loss rate, bang on there, because he's booking 54 winners, 36 losers, 90 trades. So he takes his equity from 
100 to 177 after commissions. Yeah. So you get to like an 88% return. Pretty amazing, right? Would you say that's godlike trader status? Well, it's pretty good for the time period that he was doing. It's amazing. And he's learning during that time. So you've got to remember these guys are coming in and they don't know shit in the beginning. They do their online programs and then they do a mentoring program. Okay. So that progression over a six month period is insanely good for a retail trader, right? But is it godlike trader status? Not yet. Why? Why? Sorry? Yeah. So we need statistical significance. He's only done 90 trades. So what do we consider statistical significance? It'll be a year of trading and at least 150 trades. So it's too early to tell with this guy if he's a god yet. Okay. <laughs> Next guy, Phil. So Gunter is in Switzerland. Phil is in Austria. I mentored this guy as well last year. He was on the Thailand program. Similar situation. Win loss rate is not as good. A little bit less. What's this guy made? 62 grand. I think this is over a 16 week period. Yeah. On a 100 grand account. Pretty good. But again, we can't say he's godlike. We need statistical significance. Okay. Next, Dieter. Mental this guy from October last year uh, on the Thailand program. He's in Belgium. What did he make here? Yeah. Total dollars 72 on a 123 account. 65.35. This guy, some, you know, when we do mentoring programs in Thailand, we're in the classroom with people face to face. We see very early on who's got a natural affinity and talent for this business. Okay. This guy from day one was unbelievably good. I, you could just tell he's going to be amazing. He hadn't even put a trade on yet with us. And I just knew this guy's going to be really good. He's still doing amazing. The other guys are doing okay. This guy's doing amazing. Next, Sean. So this guy's in Florida, retired from California comes on the Thailand program this year, starts trading in the first week of May. Okay. I mentor him, makes 140 grand in 16 weeks. Okay. He sent me an update a few days ago. He's up to 188. Now, not bad. Is it godlike? Not yet. He's only done at that stage. He'd only done 54 trades, but again, Sean, this guy, he's, old, he's an older guy. This guy, in the beginning, wasn't that good. And I had, to re, I had to shout at him a lot in the first three, four phone calls. And he made some errors. Because in between phone calls, you can't supervise people, right? At the end of the day, people can just do whatever they want. But you're giving them instructions. Like, do this in the next week. We're going to put this trade on, we're going to put this trade on, we're going to take this one off. This is how you put it on, this is how you take it off. Right, <clears throat> so you give people instructions. After his second call, he came back and he'd done something really stupid. Nothing to do with any of the instructions that I'd given him or anything we talked about on the call. He restructured a trade after trading out of it without asking me first. And he just fucked it up. Look. <laughs> And I just, had, I just lost it with him and said, look, you're obviously one of these guys who's got really bad habits from before and I'm going to have to smash them out of you. This is just so fucking dumb. Okay. And he was really upset about it because he feels like a failure, but that's good. You need to elicit an emotional response. So he never forgets and he never does it again. Okay. So he never did it again. And then he went on to absolutely kill it. So as I say, he's at 188 now. Oh, and by the way, I'm interviewing this guy on October 12th on a webinar. I'm not going to stick it on YouTube. So if you sign up for it, it's free. Everyone can go. So as I say, quite successful guy outside trading. He's done pretty well. He's got some money. He's well capitalized. For the first time in his life, he's learned how to trade properly. 
Next guy, uh, Richard. I put this in late today. Actually, just before you arrived, because he's here, Richard. He was at the dinner last night. I mentored him. He was on the Thailand program this year. 80 grand on a 225 account in 20 weeks. Less than 20 weeks. Yeah. So, how do we get this godlike trader status? Well, you've got to get the right information, obviously. You've got to start off with a good education and good process, but you've got to implement it and you've got to be consistent, okay? Think about what we discussed earlier about copy trading, talking heads on CNBC and Bloomberg, paid advertising, Wall Street bets, punting around on brokerage platforms with massively wide options, prices and spreads, okay? And YOLO trading. Do you think you can achieve godlike trader status by doing that? Obviously not, okay? If you're gonna do this properly, it needs to be done to like a professional standard, okay? So, these key statistics, absolute return, 50 to 100% plus. But you've gotta have those trades, those types of trades in your portfolio. The godlike trades, the hedges at the right times, the tail risk trades that you find, the pain trades to get max pain results and be on the other side of the pain. You get these big returns in your portfolio on top of the regular monthly bread and butter returns, okay? That's how you get over 100%. Win-loss rate, at least 60-40. R-score, minimum 1.5. Sharp ratio of trading options, minimum three. And you'll probably have an average days in a trade, 20 to 25. Trade ideas rooted in fundamentals with technical analysis and price action, efficient ROI from your trade structures like you've seen, very, very good standard of preventative risk management and reactive risk management. You've got to be very disciplined and stick to those disciplines. Don't deviate from the path. You know, it's interesting. We see so many people come through ITPM. The moment people start deviating from the path, that we teach them is when it starts to go wrong. Because that's when they stop implementing the process properly and start trying to do things that they used to do or things that they get sucked into doing by the media, okay? As soon as they deviate from the path that we teach them, it starts to go wrong and we tell them, go back, come back to the path, stop doing what you're doing. And then, Obviously, you have to manage the business properly. So those key statistics, you've got to manage positions to make sure you get those statistics. You know, so when you're coming up to an options expiry at the third Friday of every month, you're planning this expiry weeks in advance, weeks in advance, because in that week when you have options expiring, you better be banking profit. You're not allowed to lose money. That's the point. You need to manage the positions and manage the business properly. You are not allowed to bank a loss. You know, it's funny, like, we all worked at investment banks pre the Volcker rule. So we were prop traders as well as market makers, okay? But imagine when you work for a public company like Goldman Sachs in the 2000s, okay? Your job is to make money every day because they're gonna report quarterly earnings, right? Your job as a trader was to bank money every day. Keep the cash register ringing, boom, 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 every day. Money, 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 in, in, in. You're not allowed to book a loss. You're not allowed to book a loss. If you book losses, you're in trouble. It's your job as a trader to bank money. Number at the bottom of the screen must go up. Number go up. Keep it, keep it simple. If you've got a $100,000 account, of course you've got your process. You come up with trade ideas. You, you're trying to risk manage everything properly. You structure things really well. You go about it by having a consistently high level quality process.
okay? But this is what it comes down to, $100,000 account. Five days to go till expiry. It looks like you're gonna book $23,000 of wins and $11,000 of losses. Good, book it. You just make 12 grand that month. Go to the next month. Keep the equity curve going up. Don't sit there and wait till Friday and it all goes wrong. Book it. Your job is to make money. Do it. But Anton, what if it goes further? Fine. Book the money. Restructure the trade. Roll it out. Three months. You can still have the position on, but roll it out for three months. You bank money. That's your job. Okay? So, where do we get this education? Well, hello. Welcome to the Institute of Trading and Portfolio Management. It's all there for you if you want it. Introductory program, IPLT video series, very digestible, 10 videos. You can do it in less than a week. Uh, professional Trading Masterclass and the Options Trading Masterclass. If you do all of those three, you're very, very well set on your way. Combined, that's gonna take you three months, even with a full-time job, okay? The best way to digest these programs is to watch them all through first, as if you're binge watching a Netflix series. And then go back and go through slower, go through them slower and do the spreadsheet work and the modeling about 20% of the pace that you did binge watching. And then just make sure you make progress. Don't get stuck. You know, we get a lot of guys come into ITPM and they, for example, do one program in 2018, their next program in 2020, their next program in 2022, and then come, in 20, come to us in 2023 and say, we can do, should we do a mentoring program now? Now that's fine if your circumstances are you don't really have the money and you have to save up to do things. You should definitely do that if you have to save up to do things, right? But if you've got the money, don't wait five years. You can make significant money in 60 days if you just do a mentoring program. You've seen it here, okay? If you come on the Thailand program, $100,000 in your account, I will teach you directly, we'll make serious money. So supervision and mentoring programs, what are we doing really? It's, it's advanced stuff because when you're supervised, you can do things that you wouldn't normally do if you were out there on your own, even if you did the online programs. So advanced trade idea generation, advanced option structuring. You're going to be in the society discord as well. So you're going to have the company of the most educated and profitable people at ITPM. Okay. So these are all the guys who have done mentoring programs in the past and who are currently doing mentoring programs. You're in the society for 12 months. Okay. Advanced risk management, obviously and managing the monthly options expiries together. So all the little tricks that you can't really teach in a video series. There's certain things we can't put in video programs. Why? Because it, it will go over people's heads and they'll start doing dangerous things that are, when they're unsupervised and they'll fuck things up, right? So there's certain things that we can only do when you're supervised, okay? So obviously it's more advanced. Statistical significance that we touched on, okay? To get that godlike trader status, you've got to get your equity curve going up all the time, okay? As much as possible on a regular basis, right? You've got to have st statistical significance to claim consistency. You've got to have consistency to claim godlike trader status. Okay? So you've got to commit to this. This isn't, I'm coming to ITPM, I'll try to make money in June, I'll disappear for six months, and then I'll try and make money next year. If you want to do this, you've got to do it properly. Okay? In one year, you can achieve a really high level of status. Okay? 150 trades minimum over that year. What does that mean? When we look at your spreadsheets or any third party from the outside looks at your spreadsheets and looks at your statistics and your trades for the last year, they look at it and go, this guy knows his shit. 
it's really obvious, okay? Any professional trader knows it when they're looking at your stats and looking at your trades for the last year. They will know it straight away. They know what, that you know what you're doing, okay? So why do we do it this way? Well, we could, as a school, like many other people out there, okay? They're all charlatans, right? They lower the bar and they tell you what you want to hear. It's not that hard, guys. You don't have to put a lot of effort in. You just follow this line on the chart and buy and sell when the indicator says this. Or open my tips in my Telegram channel and just buy and sell when I tell you to. Okay? They tell you what you want to hear, that it's easy. It's not easy. You have to commit to it and you have to get it done. It's a job that you just have to get done, okay? There's no substitute to learning how to do this yourself. No substitute. And even if you don't do it yourself, but you have the right education and you give your money to other people to invest on your behalf, at least you can call them out every month and say, what the hell is this? Because you know what you're doing and they don't. You can beat them up. Okay, you, you, there's no substitute to knowing how to do it, okay? So we set the bar high, we don't lower it and tell you what you wanna hear. We keep the bar high at the professional level and say, you have to come to our standard. And if you can't, that's fine, at least you tried, right? You have to get up to our standard, okay? That's what your account needs to look like, your equity curve needs to look like over time, okay? So this is an account, for example, where we start with a hundred-ish thousand dollars in the account. The equity curve is going up like this, and we have a line of best fit through the middle, okay? That's the variation around the line of best fit. So you don't want to have it too below the line of best fit and the variation to be wide, okay? It needs to be as smooth as possible but everyone knows there's going to be variation. But you have to manage that line and manage the variation and get those statistics, okay? So if you're sitting here three years from now, two years from now, and you've turned 100 into 280, you've got a nice equity curve, you've got your stats, your variation around the line of best fit is not wide, that means you've got statistical significance and you're hot. You're hot, okay? You've done it, you've achieved it, okay? There's guys in this room who've achieved it. Speak to them later, okay? So when we're trying to achieve godlike trader status, we need to know what's at the end of the path and the pathway that we need to walk, okay? And we make sure that we don't deviate from that path, okay? It's not about having one big win, guys. It's about consistency and hitting the stats every year, okay? You've got to show up regularly. It's a weekly endeavor. You've got monthly options expiries every month. It's a weekly endeavor, okay? Now, if you do this properly, it's a skill set that you'll have for the rest of your life, okay? But you've just got to be willing to put the effort in, learn it, and implement it well, okay? Do it properly. Everyone's got choices, obviously, in life to make. Most people, what, what's trading on their list of priorities? It's way down, okay? But that's why people take shortcuts. The first thing you need to do is raise it up the priority list. What's number one priority for everybody? Probably family. What's number two? Career. What's number three? Maybe hobbies and interests. Where's trading? Trading needs to be above hobbies and interests. It's not a hobby. It's not an interest. You're not playing a game here. You have to make money, okay? It's gotta be right up there with family and career. And it's a virtual circle. If you're winning all the time in trading, probably your home life is gonna be good. If your home life is good, you're probably gonna be winning in trading. If you fuck one of those up, the other one gets fucked up too. <laughs> so, 
But overall, just get it up the priority list, okay? So look here, for example, ITPM. It's all right in front of you. Look at the guys here. The industry experience is insane. And you can talk to all of the teachers later. Obviously, you can talk to me directly. The expertise is right in front of you. The education is right in front of you. It's insane if you don't pull the trigger because we are literally the best. Okay? It's just a question if, if you want to do it or not. It's the challenge, if you're up for the challenge or not, okay? So if you're not, it's okay. We're obviously still going to be here when you're ready. We're still going to be around. It's what we love. It's what we do. It's our reason for being, okay? Just don't find out the hard way and come back and say, I lost 100 grand, 50 grand, 25 grand before you come back to us, okay? Because you will. There's a tried and tested way of doing this over multiple business cycles and multiple decades. What I've shown you today is how you do it. So I've shown you what's at the end of the path and the pathway that you've got to walk. It's up to you guys now to decide. Thank you very much.